Let's jump into the gaming news for today for Tuesday, the 20th of October. And let's talk about the newest and hottest gaming news, shall we? Because that's where we are at. And speaking of Final Fantasy XIV, the first news is that Final Fantasy XIV has a free login campaign, which gives you the ability, if you have played this game before, you can now play up to 96 hours of free game time. Hey, Simon. Good to see you. Welcome in. Enjoy your break. But yeah, so if you have played Final Fantasy XIV and your subscription did run out because for various reasons, um, you can now enjoy up to four days of free ga game time uh, with the latest campaign. So you don't have to pay and you can just play. Keep also in mind, if you have never played Final Fantasy XIV, they have a very, very extensive trial. Uh, they're giving you the base game plus the first expansion, Heaven's Ward, for free. There's no limitation on it. Or, well, there is a limitation on, like, I think you cannot do anything in the auction house. And I think you cannot, like, add people to friends or add people to a group, but they can add you and something like that. Like, it doesn't, if you just play the game, it doesn't really matter. Like, they just have some protections in there for gold sellers. So, it's not, it's not really a biggie. Um, especially because, interestingly enough, I have never seen gold sellers in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, that's, that's a little bit weird. Like it's 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 cool, but it's weird that I have never seen like any gold sellers. Because gold is just not it's just not important in this game. Like the only the only thing where gold is important for is or gill gill is important for is when you want to buy a house. <laughs> Let's be real here. Buying a house in itself is just an issue. And Gory, your point, um, I think every MMO is doing this by now, like even World of Warcraft. Like, nah. It's like, yeah, World of Warcraft is even doing it. Housing, housing is just dumb. I'm, I'm still like, I don't understand housing in Final Fantasy XIV. It's this, we limit an unlimited space. What? What? Yeah, and WoW added the uh, ability that you can actually, like, if you are buying, or if you have, like, the base game, like, you were getting, like, all the expansions and stuff. Like, the base game, whenever the new expansion is coming out, is getting, like, all the other expansions. So now with Shadowlands, when you have the base game of World of Warcraft, you're basically getting everything up to uh, Shadowlands. So, yeah. Housing... Housing is just absolutely stupid. It's... So for, for everybody who doesn't understand housing in Final Fantasy XIV, quickly explained... You are going in a dungeon or in an instanced section of the game where there are multiple layers of housing areas, right? Like when a housing area is full, a new housing area was created. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason, they decided that after a specific number, which is like, what, 14, 15 or something like that, it's full. It's full. And it's like, wait, but this is an infinite dungeon. You you could just add layer for layer for layer for layer for layer. Why do you limit housing? Like what why do you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Like and they have instead of just 
taking away the limitations, they're like, no, we are slowly adding a new layer every year. And it's like, there's not a solution. This is bullshit. I'm sorry, Square, but like housing is really one of the things in Final Fantasy XIV where I have to say, you screwed that up big time. It is bad. It is just outright bad. There is no fixing it. The only thing to fix it is to, well, take away the lock. Let the people buy the houses, especially because housing is not a small part of Final Fantasy XIV. Like, housing can... Or to put it in other terms, housing in Final Fantasy XIV is on the level of the housing in The Sims. That's how elaborated housing is. Like, I know people who do nothing but building their own home stuff. They're doing nothing else. And the developers are basically just like ousting people and telling them, well, it's a cool game feature, right? Well, sucks to be you because you cannot use it because, well, all the housing or well, all the houses are gone in your server. Whoopsie daisy. They basically brought a real life issue into a game where it doesn't have to be an issue because you have infinite space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The interior crafters. We have we have one in our guild who is an interior crafter. That dude is rich. Like, I'm happy here sitting here with my 5 million, 5 million gil. And I'm like, oh, I have 5 million gil. And he's like, yeah, I have 50 million. <gasps> you have what? Yeah, I have 50 million. I think I made another 10 million last week. <laughs> like it is like in, if you want to make money interior is where it's at in Final Fantasy like that makes the money people are crazy for housing especially because it is a rare thing but it's just uh, it is so shitty like, again, the whole system is just meh. All right. Well, we slightly derailed uh, the actual the actual conversation. <laughs> but, yeah, you have now, if you want to log in into Final Fantasy XIV, the moment you log in, you are getting uh, 96 hours free of game time, which is quite a bit. So, enjoy. Enjoy. Let's jump into... The big news of the day, like we have some other interesting news, but let's let's do the big news here. And ma'am, I don't. I'm, um, yeah. I don't know how to how to describe this, but this is a bad sign. So unfortunately, uh, Hard Suit Labs and Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines has announced today that they lost another high figure for the game. And unfortunately, they lost... What's the name? I want to say Clara, but it's not Clara. It's Kara, right? Yeah, Kara Allison. Miss Allison. I would just say Allison. I would not... I think I would screw up the first name, so... Uh, let's just say Miss Allison. Um, she was the senior narrative designer in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. And this is now the what? Third high figure Vampire the Masquerade 2 has been losing in the last, what, two or three months? Like they first lost the narrative, the lead narrative writer. 
who was also like the writer for Bloodlines 1. And then they also, uh, I think, lost the producer. And now they lost the lead narrative, senior narrative designer. Like that is also very important for like how the story has been told, right? And it's just like, man. <sighs> it's not good when a game struggles with those issues and it got delayed multiple times. And they were always like, yeah, it's for the quality of the game, quality of the game. Uh, I'm at this point, I don't believe the developer anymore. I don't believe Paradox anymore when they say that. Because the conclusion I have been drawing is they didn't delay it for the quality of the game. They delayed it because, well, they're losing people and they don't really know where to go with it. Like, it seems like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines will take a sharp turn. At this point, I wouldn't be even surprised if they're announcing that they're redoing it, like they're starting from scratch with a new team, or they even switch up the developer, or worst case scenario, Paradox is killing it off. If, if the losses are becoming too big, and they have the feeling they cannot recoup those losses, Paradox will kill this off. So, this is bad. Like, especially when you lose, like, some, some like, of the, of the big shots, right? But, like, I mean, the first, the first videos they have showed us, especially this one, the 28-hour, 28-hour uh, low, 28-minute thing. I, I get it, it looks rough. Especially at that point, like this video is now, I think over nearly two years old now. It's nearly two years, not fully, but nearly. I think it's one and a half years actually. And you're just wondering, like, where do they go with this game? Like, as, as, as much as I love the first one, and I think it was a good game. This one looks very much like... Somebody wanted to make a new vampire game. And I truly believe that Hard Suit Labs are some real fans of the game. But the more I hear about the issue, the more I see gameplay of it, the more I ask myself... Are they the right people for this? You know? And I'm slowly but surely drawing the conclusion, no. No, probably not. Be a shame. Yeah, they were passionate but not really capable. I mean, they definitely hired a lot of people from the old vampire game, which I would say is a good thing. Or I at least believe it's a good thing. So why is there Christmas ornaments on a what? On a crane? What? It's just I don't know. Like the it it pains me. It pains me. I'm I'm not a religious follower of the first one. Like I think that the first one was good. Um of course it has it has and had a lot of issues. Um like it is what it is. But I don't know, man. This game Maybe it's good that they swapped out the narrative team and maybe the new narrative team can do something really outstanding with the game. But... Yeah. I'm 
Uh, I'm out of ideas. Like, I, I can't defend the behavior anymore. I don't know what to say about this anymore. It's like, I see this game suffering from the inability of whoever is in charge or the developers themselves to make the right decisions and to make this a good game. And now they are starting slowly to bleed like the Assembler, right? The Star Assembler. And... There's never a good sign, man. Yeah, it seems it seems to be like an issue of a lot of like um studios nowadays units that when like the old guard is meeting the new guard, they they have issues. Um it's kind of interesting that you were mentioning it because I read an interview today with, I think it was, no, it was not PC Gamer. Game Inform? So, so, someone had, like, watched a preview build or a playthrough of Evil Genius 2. Evil Genius 2 is very similar to Vampire the Masquerade bloodlines too and i know people say well they're not similar at all what are you talking about no gameplay wise of course they're not similar at all like they're not the same thing not even remotely but from the history they are very similar there was this old studio who made a game which is beloved by a certain amount of fan base right but unfortunately it never got the success it could have gotten and it had a lot of issues and the studio who basically created this died like the studio doesn't exist anymore and the previous developers are just all like somewhere else and then another studio took it up like rebellion took it up and they were like all right let's Let's do this. Let's do an Evil Genius 2. And apparently they are trying very hard to get the Evil Genius right. Like this is apparently their main focus because after 18 years nearly, uh, they want to make sure that, well, 16 years, I think it is. Was it 2004? I think it was 2004 when it came out. Not 2002. I was mixed it up. And they are like just trying to make it right but they are also adding new things to the game and working on a lot of issues. But the good thing here is, and this is why they don't have that problem, which you just described with Vampire, is there is no old guard. Like, sure, there might be, like, one or two developers from the old game working on the new game. Oh, my God, this looks so bad. I've totally forgotten how bad this looks. Um, right? But they don't have an old guard issue. There is no old guard. Like all the all the developers are basically working on the game. They're a huge fan of it. But they know exactly what they want. And nobody's stopping them with, Hey, but this is not very evil genius like. Like this is not how we did it in the past. We should totally not do that. Like, right, that doesn't happen here. And this is why Evil Genius, at least in my opinion, looks really, really good right now. Because they have a unified vision. They are all working together on this. And there is no old guard, new guard clash who have two different visions about the game. And yeah, this could be an issue for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines too. It totally could be an issue for them. I wouldn't be surprised by it. But unfortunately, I have now reached a point for Bloodlines 2 where you just sit and wait. Like, I don't... I'm not hyped for this game anymore. Like, I was at the beginning. Like, I really was like, oh man, yeah, dude. That could be really cool. But now I'm at the point where I don't really care about the game anymore. I just wait till the game is done and then we'll have a look at it. Before that, I I can't get hyped for it anymore. 
which sucks. Which really, really sucks. Because I like the first one. Not the end boss fight. Let's, let's not talk about the end boss fight here. But everything else was good in the game. And I think it's it's a bit of a shame. I really hope they um, they can turn this around. I think it's really a question who comes down, and this is the last thing I would say about this. I think it's a question, when will Paradox come down on them? Like, Paradox has been very quiet and very much holding back on anything. They, yeah, sure, they announced the game. They they try to showcase a few things here and there. Um, but they haven't really done anything officially to jump into the game. Yeah, they won't have unlimited power, uh, money. Yeah, they can only sell so many DLCs for their games. <laughs> We need another Europa Universalis DLC. Why? We have to finance Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines too. <laughs> no, but jokes aside, like I'm very, very interested to see when Paradox will say, okay, enough is enough. Like this has to end. And I mean, they own Hardsuit Labs, right? Did they? Can somebody look this up very quickly? If they actually like... I think they own Hardsuit Labs, right? They have bought Hardsuit Labs like a few few months ago. Like first, Hardsuit Labs was an independent contractor for quite some time. And then a few months ago, I think they announced that they are buying it to have like more, basically more direct control on the studio and on the development of Vampire the Bloodlines. Vampire the Bloodlines? That was Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines too. Man, that is such a convoluted title. <laughs> I just realized how convoluted this is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think they, they bought Heartsuit Labs like a few months ago or bought a stake in it. I'm not sure if they fully own them, but I think they bought like a part of it and they did it basically to have more control over Hansuit Labs so yeah again interested to see when they will put the uh, thumb down not listed as owned on wiki maybe I mean I know that Tencent has a stake in uh, in Paradox. I know that because well, Tencent has basically a stake in everything. It's, uh, which which company does they not own? They're owning a thirty three stake percent stake on Hardsuit Labs. It's something like that. Yeah, they didn't fully own Paradox, or Paradox doesn't fully own Hardsuit Labs, but. Yeah. I knew that they that they owned them partially or something so that they finally have like a word to say in this. Which again is another sign for a company which is not good. Like when you were working on an IP for another company and the first thing they are doing after one or two years of development is buying 33% of your company so that they finally have a say in what you were doing. That's not good. <laughs> That's never a good sign for anything. Never. So, no. Yeah. It's a shame. It really is a shame. Like, I... I just hope they're turning this around. Like... I would be honest, if this game is becoming another shit show like the first game, 
nobody nobody will touch this IP ever again because it's cursed. Well, of course it is because superstition. But really at this point, people will not touch it anymore because there were two games. They were all like great ideas, great concepts, a lot of fun, but lots of issues, too many issues, especially for the money you might make back from the game. And developers and even like the publisher would just stay clear of it. Like, we already had more offshoot vampire games in the last year than we ever had before. Like, they were, they were, if you have missed it, um, there were a good amount of like offshoot vampire the masquerade games like story driven games and then werewolf is also coming up and whatnot and they're all released and they all worked out so it would be really awkward when all those offshoot games do kind of well and work and then the mainline game is just a mess like that would be um <clears throat> awkward to say the least all right, that was the Vampire the Masquerade talk. Now with that said, let's stick with something spooky. And let's talk about PT. So, as you might have known, PT was the playable teaser of Silent Hills back in the day created by Kojima and some other people and then there was a big fallout with Konami and Kojima and you know the whole project was killed off but PT itself the demo is still beloved by a lot of people and it's still being played today and they are still finding like hidden aspects um to PT and then, of course, the whole thing was like taken down by Konami in 2015. So you couldn't re-download the game from the PlayStation Store anymore in 2015. But you could still play it. Well, now the thing is, the PlayStation 5 is coming around. And... PT will not be supported on the PlayStation 5. Yep. That game officially will not be supported there. So... It's... Um, it's apparently doesn't have, like, backwards comp uh, compatibility features on the PS5. And uh, Konami is also a developer. Well, they have some in in house studios. They're basically like EA, where EA had dice, where EA has like all the um, Criterion and stuff. They're all in house developers. So, but yeah, apparently PT will not be backwards compatibility and. There might be still a way to play it on the PlayStation 5, but this is one of the reasons, like, this is one of the last draws, I think, for PT. And I get it. Like, the, Konami has no interest that this stain, as they see it, exists. And even Sony has no interest in this. Because if the rumors are true, Sony is working on their own um, Silent Hill, right? Like a Silent Hill remake under the Sony flag, and well, they were they don't really want to have anybody else besides them, right? Like they just they just don't. So. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a thing. So that's unfortunately. Speaking of PlayStation. Speaking of PlayStation. PlayStation has now announced, or Sony has announced, that apparently the internal fan to cool the whole thing um, will be patched over time. And they want to use the patching system to, well, basically give the fan inside the PlayStation a better behavior, how to cool certain games and how to react to certain games and apps running in the background. So they will basically optimize the fan on this data. So they are patching the fan of the PlayStation, which in itself sounds nice, right? It's like, oh, cool. So the fan is just doing its job, right? And then at some point, uh, when a new game is coming out, they can also patch the fan and that the fan is cooling the whole game better because they have some spots where they need more power from the GPU so that it produce more heat. So the fan basically knows what's going on and so on and so forth. Sounds nice, but you know, <sighs> oh, and I have a hair, bah, bah. Bad. Don't get a hair in your mouth. That's the worst. But here's the thing. Like I'm a, like I'm cynical when it comes to the gaming industry. Unfortunately, at this point, and it makes me think. Wait a second. So does that mean when a new game is coming out, and the PlayStation didn't got the fan patch yet for this game, that the PlayStation will be so loud? There is another jet engine who is just starting and you can't hear anything anymore because the PlayStation is becoming that loud. Like... Mm, mm, not sure how I feel about that. Like... Hmm. But yeah, we will uh, we will see. Like the fan was one of the big issues in the PlayStation Four, and Sony says, "Nah, the PlayStation Five would be much much quieter than the PlayStation Four. And here's the thing: the PlayStation Four was also quiet at the beginning of the console cycle, and then developers started to push the hardware more and more and more and more till the PlayStation Four was like, "All right, I think I have cool." I have to cool stuff more. So I really hope it works out for Sony because oh. uh. that's what headphones so for. True. But here's the thing. People love to use their consoles on their big TVs and they love to use their surround sound. So they don't really want the fan sound in the background. Like, I understand why people are not happy about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next news. Oh boy. This is a very interesting news. I find this I guess you know, I'm um I'm dabbling in pretty much everywhere in the gaming industry. Like everything which is gaming related is definitely something which fancies my interest and which I try to cover to a certain reason and to a certain aspect, right? And sometimes we are going a little bit outside of the gaming industry or we are moving to parts of the gaming industry where most people are just like, dude, I don't give a damn, what is that? But because I think it is an integral part for the gaming industry, I 
truly believe that it is important to talk about that. So, and in the last week, something has happened which makes a lot of developers sweat right now, especially publishers in that regard. And it seems like there was a huge wave of games who used the Nuvo as a copyright protection being cracked. Like, the newest thing which happened yesterday, Marvel Avengers is now cracked. Yes, you can play a pirated version of Marvel Avengers. And it works. <laughs> yes. I feel like, wait, Marvel Avengers is the online game, right? It's like the online co-op thing with the... Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. So, a lot of games, if you have never heard of it, use De Nouveau. A lot of bigger games use De Nouveau nowadays when they are releasing a game because De Nouveau is one of the most secure copyright protections out there. I'm not saying it's unbreakable because, well, it isn't, which has uh, the last week shown. But it is relatively secure, especially when there is a new version coming out. Like the thing with the Nuvo is that there are multiple versions of the Nuvo, and every time the Nuvo basically gets cracked, the developer has already a new version somewhere or is already working on the next version and a lot of things change and this is very infuriating for the pirates out there because they basically start every time at zero. Like every time a new De Nuvo version is coming out for the pirates is basically like starting at zero again. And over the years this became very tedious for them so a lot of groups gave up. Not all of them. But a lot of them gave up. And whenever there was like, oh yeah, this game has the Nouveau, the pirates were like, oh, too much effort. Too much effort, I'm out. And so for the last half a year, if developers didn't screw it up themselves because they forget to put the Nouveau into the game or they put the, uh, un or the unprotected EXE somewhere nearby, right? But if they didn't screw it up, for the last six months, the Nuvo basically prot uh, protected a lot of games. Like Death Stranding has been out since June. Hasn't been cracked, right? Um, now we uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. Tekken 7, Total War 3 Kingdoms, the whole thing. There, there are so many. There are so many, which just got cracked in like a week. And you might say, okay, why are you telling us that? Like, well, why is that important? It is important because, as you might have seen on the release calendar, games are coming out very soon. Big games. Very big games. And I think each and every one of them, besides of Cyberpunk, is using the Nuvo. Like Assassin's Creed Valhalla will use the Nuvo. Like that is that is a god given because it's Ubisoft, and Ubisoft likes to have like twenty million layers of uh, protection on their games for no particular reason. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion would definitely have it. Yakuza like a dragon will have it. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops, Godfall will definitely have it. Football Manager 2021 will have it. I could go on, and I can go on, and I could go on. But the point is, copyright protections have been a way for publishers to have an excuse to bring games to the PC and whatnot. And it's also very important for the Nouveau that people believe that the Nouveau is uncrackable because 
De Nouveau in itself survives a little bit on its prestige, which it shouldn't have, but it has. And when that fails, like we had a time, like about two years ago, where De Nouveau was cracked in a day. Like, they, they screwed something up at that point. And every time there was a new De Nouveau version and a new De Nouveau game coming out, it was cracked in a day. It was laughable at that point. And it did go so far that a lot of publishers just said, you know what? You're not worth my money anymore. You are not worth my money anymore. Like, I'm I'm not using any copyright or now nah, I'm removing your copyright. Like, you are useless. And De Nouveau invested a lot at that point to get back the trust. To get back the trust of the publishers that they say, okay, well, apparently you work now. Um, cool. We are, we are good with that. So if they are losing their trust again, this could have some serious repercussions for the Nouveau itself. Well, they are different numbers. They are different numbers for the Nouveau. Like that, that number is totally not accurate anymore. In any shape or form. So I don't like. We know that there's also like a subscription system and a contract system and whatnot. Like the numbers vary vastly nowadays. But again, like the Nouveau lives from the prestige. And if this prestige is going away, the Nouveau has a problem. So I'm very interested to see what will happen next when Assassin's Creed Valhalla is coming out or like any of the other like the Nouveau games. Like how fast um, GTA never had the Nouveau, by the way. GTA is using their own propriety um, protection in combination with something else. The same goes for Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't have the Nouveau. Yep. It's their own system they're using with something something weird. Rockstar is not using the Nouveau. They're using their own thing. And Red Dead Redemption 2, by the way, is not cracked yet. Apparently, that thing works. But yeah, no, they're not, they not using the Nouveau. But nonetheless, it will be very interesting to see what will happen now in the next few weeks and months. Um, the thing is just, why is this so important? Because... Piracy is not a problem. Um, there was a study about five years ago which was conducted in the European Union and was conducted or was, well, financed by the European Union. So the European Union was going to some scientists and they were like, make us a study and tell us exactly how bad piracy is here in Europe for movies, for games, for a lot of things. And the study was finished in 2015, and for whatever reason, that study got sealed away. It got never published. I, I can just assume that the content industry was not very thrilled about what was in the study, because the study then got leaked in 2017 by... I think I think somebody working at the European Union or something like that. Like she was she was leaking the study online, and what the study found out was piracy is not an issue in Europe. Like the movie industry only suffers like four percent or something like that from piracy. Like it's laughable, and the gaming industry, quite the contrary, has actually sometimes moments where pirated copies of a game can actually push the selling figures of said game. So piracy could actually amplify the amount of games which were sold because people use it as a demo 
and they were like, hey, wow, this game is really cool. Oh, I want to play this online with my friends. This is an online function. Or oh, man, this game is really good. I have to give the developers some money. And then people do it, right? So actually in the European Union, at least, gaming piracy is not an issue. It's really not. And so it's publishers who are spending a lot of money for useless protection. And so I hope at some day, which it won't, I'm aware of it, but I still hope at some day, publishers will learn from this and they will realize that they don't need those completely crazy copyright protections and apparently the only way how they can learn this is by them showing that pirates always find a way to break their games and that they don't help it. So, yeah. I, I just hope at some point the publishers draw the right conclusion that is unnecessary. And the thing is with copyright, why I hate copyright so much, is most games I had issues with, I used some form of copyright mechanism. Like, the thing I will never forget is my Command to Conquer Generals experience, where Command to Conquer Generals told me on day of the release, I have to put in the original disc. And I was like, dude, I just bought this game. What are you talking about? And they were like, nah, nah, nah. This is a pirated version you have there in your disk drive. Oh yeah, Bioshock was also like pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah. So I basically had to crack uh, my Command Conquer. The thing I just bought, I had to crack it to play it. And why? Oh, because, well, the copyright protection didn't like it that I put basically the disc in my DVD burner. Because I had like one of those no combination disc drives, which is also like a reader and a burner. Like it's basically all in one, like we have it nowadays. And back in the day, that was like relatively new. And so I put it, of course, in, just, in the only disc drive I had which was also my DVD burner. And the copyright protection was like, no, 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 no. That's a DVD burner you were using there. No, oh, no, 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 no. That means that is like a pirated version. I say, like, what are you talking about? What? And yeah, I had some, I had some issues with the Novo too. And of course, it's the per preservation of games is also a big issue like we have already games as of today which are unplayable through normal means because of the copyright because the copyright is still there didn't get removed but the company did go out of business, the contract was ending, and then nobody removed the copyright thing, but the servers who basically communicated with the copyright are gone. Um, like one of the most recent examples, I know most people won't care for it because it's on the Mac, but was Metal Gear Rising. Metal Gear Rising on the Mac is not playable anymore because the company who basically ported the game to the Mac did go out of business, but they didn't remove the copyright protection. And when they did go out of business, well, they don't pay the fee for the server anymore. And so the, the game cannot authorize anymore with the server. So Metal Gear Rising on the Mac, at least as of today, is unplayable. And again, I know that some people say, oh, it's just a Mac. Yeah, but there are also some other games. Like I think there's a list out there you can look up. 
It's not like super crazy big games. But they are games nonetheless. And I like to play like to play some older games now and then. And the last thing I want is opening up a game and being told, Well shoot, you can play this because copyright protection. Like it's something I don't want to see. So yeah, it's it's kind of interesting to see what will happen, and I just hope that the Nuvo is going away, and that we don't get a replacement. I really hope so. All right. Uh. I think let me let me have a quick look. Let me see. I think we are done with the game news. Let me let me Let me look it up very quickly if I have not missed anything in particular nope we got all the news all of them all of them we got them all Mwah. yep nope I have one month left to cyberpunk just saying <laughs> Well, actually, it's like 29 months, 29 days. No news about your OnlyFans? Not about my OnlyFans, but if you want to support me on Patreon, you can, of course, do that right there in the chat. Like, that's where you can support me, if you so desire. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel and help me continue doing this. Because, well, as you know, I'm not streaming on Twitch anymore. And, yeah, thank you for everyone who supports me on patreon.com slash chaosmog. I really, really do appreciate that. And, again, thanks so much for watching the gaming news. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to click on the like button. And maybe if you're new to the channel, you might want to subscribe to it. Because we're doing gaming news every morning. At 8 m e t with mole in the mole in the morning, the gaming news. So thank you so much for watching that. See you tomorrow then. <laughs>